Hi guys, this is Nimsh and welcome to my first real flesh and blood video. I'm a veteran card game player. I've been pretty successful in WoW TCG, Hearthstone, Legend of the Five Rings, and uh, I've been playing card games all my life. So uh, in flesh and blood, I'm, I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I've actually learned uh, the game pretty fast. I picked it up in August last year. Then uh, I missed the road to national season, but I still qualified for the Polish nationals and I took top four, which currently places me at the top 220 ELO rating in the world, uh, which is all right. So... Uh, for now, for today, I would like to give you five plus five uh, steps to become a better player and to level up. So we'll start with five steps I usually use when I pick up a new game uh, to get better at it. And I'll, basically the steps I use to, to take my top four national spot. And then five advice pieces, uh, which are basically just going to help you out as a player if you choose to, to follow that up. I'm definitely using those for any game I pick up and uh, pretty happy with the results. So let's start. So step number one is to understand the core concepts of the game. So whenever I pick up a new card game, I'm trying to understand what doesn't make it tick? What is the, the core thing I need to know about the combat economy and all that stuff? So I listed a couple of things here. For now, it will be just the concepts I just mentioned, like the taglines. Some of them are very generic and I might go in depth into them in the future videos. But for now, that's in a generic manner. Let's start with uh, advantage. So card advantage and card quality advantage. A pretty important concept in Flesh and Blood, especially because you don't draw that much. I uh, just draw the four cards every turn. And also um, a quality card advantage is like whatever is left in your deck. So I think those are two concepts that there should be articles on. Uh, I basically used um, Channel Fireball, pretty good articles there, uh, Rave Times, also a couple of really good core concept mechanics there. I think for this, uh, for those purposes, you can also try to read articles uh, from Magic Gathering and Hearthstone and overall like concepts on card advantage. And I think tempo is another one that's very important. Um, so definitely try to read up on those and think uh, about them in context of Flesh and Blood. Uh, there is many more. So another one is breakpoints. Uh, you want to look at um, attack values, defense values, and understand breakpoints. In Flesh and Blood, it's, for example, a number of four. It's nice. It's a first breakpoint because uh, a lot of cards have a defense of three, which means the four would be the breakpoint, the magical number that goes through block. Another would be seven. Uh, so, so, you know, like it's defenses in threes, and those are the breakpoints you kind of need to understand because that will uh, help you to evaluate cards much better. And then we have Arsenal and Pivot Turns. So uh, I think there is a really good article about it on uh, Channel Fireball, actually, with um, understanding what Pivot Turns are and uh, like how to use them during the, um, the, the turn cycle to be able to actually gain back the advantage and be able to... Um, you know, to win the game, right? And Arsenal itself has a couple of articles as well to uh, help you understand what are the best cards to store in your arsenal, how to read your opponent's arsenal. Uh, so definitely something to re read upon. Hidden information, that's something that is, I don't think there is much articles uh, about hidden information. You need to understand what hidden information is in context of flesh and blood. So like what does opponent, uh, what, what your opponent doesn't know and when do you reveal things? So super base example, you attack with a weapon, and uh, if you have Razor Reflex, you will kill them, and you don't play Razor Reflex. This means you gi you've given them an information that you don't have Razor Reflex, so that is not hidden information anymore for them. Um, whenever you pitch cards, if your opponent is paying attention, this is something they also notice, so that uh, that is revealed information for them. For example, I played versus... Uh, a slander the other day and uh, my opponent pitched blizzard turn one pitched blizzard turn two and blitz uh, so i knew the blizzard is definitely not in their hand for a couple of upcoming turns um, and basically think about your reactions to um, the game state because with specific reactions also facial expressions you thinking of like i will pitch this and maybe i won't pitch this you can either have hidden information or not right so there's a lot of like i need I, I think i need a completely separate video about this but just mentioning hey this is a core concept you need to understand um another one is play to win and play not to lose this is a big one i i have a really nice example here so for example viscerae versus aldim uh, i figured that at some point you might want to never play around pummel because if you and i'm not sure if this is fully correct so just take it as an example in 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 void for now um, there is an option, let's say, if you play around Pamel um, versus Old Him as Visrai, you lose. So you cannot afford to play around Pamel. And if they have Pamel, you also lose. 
which means that if they have pummel, you lose. And if you play around pummel, you lose. So what do you win? Well, you win if you never play around pummel and they don't get it. So in this case, if you want to play to win the game, you will just ignore pummel as a card and you will just hope they never have it, which will increase your uh, percentage to win the game rather than playing around pummel being super safe, which will eventually decrease the percentage to win. So uh, this is overall playing to win and playing not to lose is a very big concept that is uh, applied to every card game. Uh, so I would recommend reading upon it because it's a big strategy piece. Um, win conditions is a big one as well. Understanding win conditions. And I've, I, again, I'm saying it is step one because this is something you can ask around um, for like, how do decks win, right? Uh, for example, if you start playing uh, CC, then Star of Prism, you really need to understand what are the win conditions between those two decks. Uh, because they are completely different, right? Like Prism wants to have a big board setup and Starvo usually would normally try to hit the bingo and kill their opponent. But because the win condition of Prism is uh, they want to set up and this, if the setup is complete, they win, then Starvo needs to uh, modify the win condition and start destroying the the win condition that Prism has, uh, which is just killing our, our Auras. So understanding win conditions without even understanding how decks really work, because you don't need to know what Prism's auras do. You just need to know you need to keep destroying them. And that is good enough for you to potentially succeed in the match, right? So understanding win conditions should be a pretty easy one to grasp. Uh, and you can get it just asking around on Discord or asking friends like, hey, how does your deck win? Like, don't tell me even what the cards do. Just tell me what do you want to achieve in this, in this match? And also understanding your own win condition. And the last one I have is game economy. Just um, trying to to take, pay attention to game economy and how uh, the resource flow looks like. And what I mean is like, you need to understand which decks are full of resources and they have a lot of blue cards, which decks have little resources and they have a lot of red cards. And especially because there's so much uh, resource taxation in Flesh and Blood with, with Frostbites, with Ice cards, like Channel Lake, Frigid, you need to understand which decks can have that and they can disrupt your, uh, disrupt your resource flow. So you can actually play your turns correctly without um, not even overspending, but basically just blocking your attacks and not getting full value out of your hand because you didn't understand the resource flow. Uh, so game economy is another one I probably need to make like a full video on, but uh, yeah, those are the base concepts. So step two is very easy. Um, just learn your deck. And that's the, the best advice I can give to uh, beginner players. Just grab one deck that you like, something that uh, just vibes with you. Maybe you like the hero. And for me, it was Ira, uh, the ninja. And just keep playing it uh, because it's impossible for you to learn everything uh, that is in game. The meta game is very diverse. Everybody has different win conditions and stuff. So just uh, play one deck after you read about those concepts, right? And then try to apply those concepts to your play and try to expand your view of the game through those concepts with that one deck you play. And I think um, that is good enough uh, basically to start. And uh, you, you should be able to learn the game pretty fast because you will be playing versus other decks. Um, and keep asking people as well, like, hey, how does your deck work? Like, what do you think is important in this matchup uh, that you played against me? Like, what, what, what were your key cards? How do you feel about this matchup? Because when you start, a, when you start playing Flesh and Blood, you, you don't know, like, if, uh, you know, you're playing Ira, you're playing versus Oldham. Like, you don't know if you have a good matchup versus Oldham or not. Like, what, how would you, right? So you need to basically see how it looks like and then ask Oldham player, like, how do you feel about this? And he will say... I, I feel wonderful. Thank you for playing Ira, right? But then you will play versus a, a different deck, like, I don't know, maybe Prism, and Prism will be, like, stressing that you are playing uh, playing Ira. Um, probably Prism actually won't be stressing, but you know what I mean, right? Um, then another step will be learn the meta game. So I don't mean play every deck um, to perfection, but after you get your Ira started, or actually... Quickly going back, uh, I think Kasai is a really good one to pick now for uh, be a beginner player because Kasai is nice to pi uh, easy to pilot and very uh, strong overall. So if you are just starting Flesh and Blood, Kasai will be very nice to just pick and, and just play Kasai a lot. Um, and then after you learn Kasai, just uh, play everything else. So what I did, I played on Tabletop Simulator, which is free. Uh, it's online, so you can just play every deck and uh, ask a friend, hey, just, I don't know, play Kasai because I know what Kasai does, uh, and I will play everything else. I'll play Reiner, Levaya, I will play Oldham, I will play all the meta decks because I just want to, I, and I will play like a couple of games because I just want to see what their cards do and how they tick. And this is an amazing way to, to learn because you will see what problems they face, right? 
um, when I started, I, I basically didn't know what Levi does. And then I played her and I un under understood quickly that, hey, I just my attacks don't work if I don't have cards in my graveyard. So I need to block to fill in my graveyard to be able to attack with cards. And uh, then you learn when you play Reiner, for example, I cannot roll for boots every game because if I roll one, I'm done. So I want to learn as little as possible, actually. But it looked so flashy when I was playing versus my friend playing Reiner and he was rolling sixes here and there, right? But you just can't do it. So play a couple games. You won't learn like every card in the deck, obviously. You, you won't master those decks, but at least you will understand how they tick. Like what, what are they about? Um, so after you do that, I think you can go back to your Kasai deck or whatever else hero you picked uh, and just try to master it. So that's the step four. Master your deck. And uh, I think it goes a long way. I, I'm currently at the step where I'm preparing for uh, the Colin Krakow. And I've been playing Viserai almost exclusively. And I played a, I played a ton of Viserai, like 100 plus games, maybe close to, I, I don't think close to 200, but 100 games for sure. Um, and I can see how much I've learned playing just that one deck. And Viserai, uh, mind you, is very complex. There is a lot of interesting lines. Uh, and I keep discovering new lines to play every day. Every tournament, I find like a very cool line I can play. And I keep learning as well. So I feel like it's so important to like focus on one deck that is good. And obviously if you pick a, a deck that is good in the meta game, it's much better because if you try to, um, I don't know if you pick dash in the current meta game and you try to maximize dash, any deck can win really. And uh, players, everybody is still learning. Not everybody has a lot of time. So you can still win tournaments with dash if you're perfect, but it's going to be much more challenging than any other deck, right? So. I do tend to pick the best decks in the meta, if possible, well, which right now in Blitz, I would say is Viserai, Alden, uh, Kano, I think is really good. Kasai is really good. Um, Reiner is pretty good. So there's like a lot of diversity in the current Blitz meta game. And uh, there is also a lot of diver diversity in CC right now. So I think there is a, a, a decks you can choose uh, to play, but definitely I would focus just on one and try to master it. Um, and then the step five, which... Uh, will come with experience is master the meta. So after you master one deck, just pick another one, master it, pick another one, master it. Um, and this is not something you can easily achieve uh, in a short time period because it does require a lot of games, a lot of reps. So um, that's why you should be mastering one deck at a time because when the meta changes, meta moves on, you will retain that experience and it will help you to understand the meta better. So let's say I'm playing Viserai right now, but if I swap from Viserai to something else in CC for next season while we play to, uh, to qualify for the, um, the, fr the French PT, I will know exactly how Viserai plays while I'm playing Prism, for example, right? So that experience I've got uh, from trying to master Viserai will, will be there. And then let's say, Next year, when I'm going to play the new shiny hero released in whatever expansion, I will already have my Viscera experience and Prism experience and whatever Reiner experience from 2022. So um, it will come with experience, but that's, I think, a very important step. That's why, if possible, you should be changing decks that you main to expand your view on the meta so you can actually play everything. Um, so those are the main five steps I follow. Uh, so now we can move into the, the five <laughs> advice points that I have for you. Uh, just generate good advice if you want to get better. Uh, so first one is um, <laughs> learn all the cards. And it's, uh, it's a fun one. I love it. I actually mentioned it when I was doing a Hearthstone tutorial video many years back. And it's such a simple step, right? But many people just ignore it. They just never go back and learn all the cards. They just keep assuming what the cards do. They get surprised. They assume wrong. Um, and especially when a, a wonderful deck builder uh, with beautiful mind comes in with his weird brew, uh, we are completely surprised and we don't know what those, those cards do uh, because they play a completely different flesh and blood game. So uh, just, yeah, keep going back, checking the cards, reading what they do, and maybe you will find something good for your deck. Um, that, that would be the best outcome. But the worst case, can worst thing that can happen is just you will just recognize the card that you've never seen before. So that's a, that's a good thing to, to do. Another thing is uh, practice with better players. So this is something that a lot of people don't do because uh, it's hard. It's hard to find players that are better than you. Not, not in the beginning. Like when you start, everybody's better. So whenever you play with, with your friends, you always just level up with them or yourself. Uh, but at some point you will plateau um, or you might basically be at the same level as everybody else in your LGS. 
And that's the time to reach out and play online tournaments, meet new people, especially people that impress you with their way of thinking and try playing with people who are just better than you. Um, and how to do it is to just be a nice person, uh, be a person that is bringing value, especially if you mastered a deck. Um, I mean, mastered, like you're basically good, right? Um, I, I'll give you an example. So a lot of, a lot of good players they are still looking for gauntlet of friends and they are looking for specialists with specific classes and the um, less popular classes are harder to find so it's sometimes for example f uh, hard to find ranger players uh, because not many people play ranger and if you're um, a nice person that is uh, you know fun to hang out with uh, on on voice comms and you play ranger um, someone who might be better than you in the game and with other classes might still be interested to play with you because you bring a ranger value and it's still you are still fun to hang out with right so uh that's the best way i think to to meet new people and uh, play with them and honestly like people just look for others to like other cool guys to um to test with um and uh and you know like if you're just a, a fun person to be with like people will want to hang out with you um then another thing is be open-minded, uh, but also develop your own opinions. So I would like you to just, uh, you know, listen to, to feedback, listen to other people, don't be stuck on opinions. And it's actually incredible to me that so many people in card games are stuck in their way of thinking and they never consider feedback and they feel something is good and it will not change their mind. Um, and then like they say, like, oh, this is the best thing in the meta game, nothing can counter it. And then somebody just comes in and counters it, right? Or they say, this card is terrible. Nobody will ever play it. And then somebody just puts it in a deck, makes it work, and it's a great card, and the price increases. So people are wrong a lot. And um, very few people are good enough to be right. Uh, so I, I personally try to be open-minded and just listen to feedback. But on the other hand, you also need to develop your own opinions at some point. And you cannot be swayed by somebody saying one thing, just like, hey, your uh, this card is always bad. And then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's bad. Like, is it bad? Are you sure it's bad? Maybe if you feel it's not bad, test it. Maybe it, it is actually bad, but at least you gave it a, a try if you felt different, right? So uh, definitely be open-minded, but also have your own, you know, have, have a spine and be not do not be afraid to have your own opinions. Um, another point is learn the rules and weird interactions. So it's another fun one. A lot of people, uh, not only in Flesh and Blood, but other card games as well, they kind of wing it. They they learn the game, they hear about the first set of rules, and they just never go back to the rule book, dude. Like they they just uh, they just wing it. They they hope they make right plays, and or they make plays with enough confidence that the opponent feels it's correct. Um, I I definitely advise against it. Um, after you get a bit of a grasp of the basics, go back read that rule set. Um, and uh, make make notes, uh, ask questions. There is amazing judge channels where um, just uh, great people are uh, they're ready to respond and give you a ruling, give you an explanation. Uh, so I would even advise to try to take the the judge zero test. Um, I'm I haven't done that yet, so like I'm still actually I still need to follow up on that test. I've already re uh, read the rule set, but I need to read it again just to make sure that I understand everything correctly. Uh, but it's it's good to just keep refreshing your knowledge about the rules, especially because Flesh and Blood does have those complicated interactions and, and response windows, and uh, it's good to know them. Um, and then with specific interactions, I think it will come with experience. Like, what you can do is obviously browse the, the judge channels and groups and see what are the most complex interactions uh, or rule updates, but it's hard to find them because there is a lot of basic questions so I think with experience, just keep Googling stuff if you are not certain. Um, and just also ask people like, hey, you're playing Kasai, right? What are the most complicated rule kind of situations in your deck? Like, what should I look for, right? Like, and ask people like Visrai has a ton of those. Uh, I think Alden has a couple as well. Uh, so yeah, just talk to people and, and try to learn um, those tricky interactions. And the, the last step I have for you is very cliche. It's just literally have fun, um, like have fun learning and have fun um, just getting better and leveling up because you'll be losing a lot. And I think in any game you pick up, you, you're going to lose a lot, especially when you're starting, right? You're going to get wrecked. Um, you need to just uh, find the pleasure in, in learning and understanding things. And I think especially during testing, if you're having like testing new ideas, 
uh, new decks, new card sets. Um, you need to get used to getting that uh, pleasure from learning something new every time and just finding a new interaction. Uh, just don't be afraid to lose. Uh, just have fun, enjoy the stuff, and um, and you'll do great. You will get better and be a better player. So I think those are the points I had for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, uh, give me feedback in the comments. And uh, if you had any questions, anything was you know unclear, happy to respond. And um, see you, some of you, uh, you guys in Krakow calling potentially, and if not, maybe France. And if not France, maybe somewhere else. But uh, keep playing Flesh and Blood. It's a great game. See you guys. Have a good one.